Hey, what's up guys? It's Nicola from Calcunic, and today we're going to talk about integration by trigonometric substitution. Let's get right into it. So today we're discussing how to integrate using a trigonometric substitution. And this method is a little more difficult than the other ones you would have learned so far. And for that reason, you would preferably want to start by trying to do a U substitution or an inverse trigonometric identity before attempting to do a trigonometric substitution. So the kind of template we're looking for in the integral that would maybe indicate to us that we want to use a trigonometric substitution is one of these following three forms. So the first one is when we have a constant minus some coefficient times an x squared term. In this case, we're going to want to make the substitution bx equals a sine theta. If, for example, we have a coefficient x squared minus a constant, then we want to do a secant substitution, bx equals a secant theta. And if they are both positive, if we have a squared plus bx squared for some a and b, then we want to make the substitution bx equals a tan theta. And in this video, we cover all three types of expressions that you may find in the integral and go over an example for each on how you would go about solving them. So let's just jump right into it. So starting off, we're asked to find the integral of 5 over x times the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And for this question, it would actually be possible to do a u substitution. Uh, you would say that u equals 4 minus x squared. And feel free to try that yourself. But for the sake of this video, we're going to do a trigonometric substitution. So we see that we have a constant minus an x squared term. So that tells us we want to do a sine substitution. So here I have the uh, general idea of what we want to look for. And in this case, we have that a squared is equal to four. So a equals two, and that's just taking the square root of both sides. So here we have minus x squared. Here we have minus b squared, x squared. We see that in the question, the only coefficient for x is one. So that means that b must be equal to one. And from above, we know that bx is equal to a sine theta is this desired substitution. So using our constants a and b, we get is x equals two uh, sine theta. And taking the derivative of both sides, we get dx equals two derivative of sine is cosine, cos theta. So we have this term here. And let's try to simplify this with the substitution that we have just uh, come up with. So we have the square root uh, four minus x squared. And we know that x is equal to two sine theta. So let's use that we have, this would reduce to, uh, we still have four. And then x is two sine theta. And we're squaring this. And so this is equal to once again, the square root of four minus two squared, that's four, and then times sine squared theta. What we're going to do here is factor out a term of four. Uh, so we get, once again, the square root of four, and then factor it out one minus sine squared theta. So let's just take out this four out of the square root, square root of four is equal to two. And on the inside, uh, one minus sine squared theta, well, that's just the Pythagorean identity, that's equal to cosine squared theta. And we have the square root of a squared. So we have two times cosine theta. And so we're going to use this value to substitute into square root of four minus x squared. So let's start solving this. Actually, we get uh, by taking the constant in the numerator out in front, we get five times the integral of we'll have one minus, sorry, one over uh, x, x is two sine theta. So we write two sine theta, uh, the square root of four minus x squared, well, we just found that out, that's two cosine theta, and dx, sorry, let's just move this to the side now, we have that dx is equal to uh, two cosine theta d theta. So we write two cosine theta and d theta here. Well, we can see that the twos can cancel out and the cosine theta terms will cancel out. And that is just going to leave us with, we write equals to uh, five times the integral of one over two sine theta d theta five over two times the 
integral and one over sine of theta, that's just cosecant theta, and then we have d theta. So now it just remains to find the integral of cosecant theta d theta, and this is actually a known integral. Uh, you could probably find it in your textbook somewhere, in the appendix, or just online. Uh, it's equal to ln of the absolute value of cosecant theta minus cotangent theta and then of course plus c because we are doing indefinite integrals right here. Now we have a final answer, however, it's in terms of theta, uh, cosecant theta and cotangent theta, and the initial question was in terms of x, so we have to transform this back into terms of x. There's actually a cool trick using the Pythagorean theorem uh, on how to do this, so don't say that you never use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so we're going to write a, we're going to draw a right angle triangle, and we're going to call this side here, this angle theta. And we know that, we know that from here, uh, that x over 2 is equal to sine theta, and that's just by rearranging. And by SOHCAHTOA, we know that sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is this side over the hypotenuse, this side. So we could say that this side here is equal to x and this side here is equal to two. And let's just call this side here the adjacent uh, a. And by using the Pythagorean theorem, we could get that a squared plus x squared is equal to two squared. Well, we know 2 squared is 4, and by moving the x squared to the other side, we get 4 minus x squared. And taking the square root of both sides, we get a is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we'll write that there. Instead of a, we have the square root of 4 minus x squared. So now let's use this information to find out what cosecant theta and cotangent theta are. Well, we know that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta or sine to the power of negative 1 theta. Uh, from above, we know sine theta is equal to x over 2. So this is equal to x over 2 to the power of negative 1, and this, by taking the reciprocal, is equal to 2 over x. We have that. Now let's find cotangent theta. Well, cotangent theta, that's just tangent theta to the power of negative 1. Uh, tangent is equal to opposite. That's opposite over adjacent. So we're going to write that tangent uh, theta is equal to x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. That's all to the power of negative 1. And um, this reciprocal is equal to then 4 minus x squared all over x. And now we're going to make these two substitutions into our final equation. We write this is equal to 5 over 2 times ln of the absolute value of cosecant theta, which is just 2 over x, and then minus uh, the square root of uh, 4 minus x squared, and that's all over x, uh, absolute value, plus c. And we could take that one step further by writing this is equal to 5 over 2 times ln of the absolute value of 2 minus the square root of 4 minus x squared all over x because that's the common denominator plus c, leaving us with our final answer. All right, so now we're asked to find the integral of 2 over the square root of 4x squared minus 1 dx. And after a quick inspection, u substitution won't work, and there is no quick identity that will be able to help us solve this. We have to resolve to trigonometric substitution. 
And so we see that we have a x squared term and then minus some constant. And that tells us that we want to do a secant substitution. So let's find out what our a and b are. This is pretty straightforward. We have b squared is equal to four. So that means that b must be equal to two. Uh, a squared, uh, that's the same as the one in the question. So that just means that a equals one. That's pretty straight up. Uh, and then our substitution, we have bx is equal to a secant theta. That means that two x is equal to a is just one. So just secant theta. And we could rewrite this as saying x is equal to secant theta over two. And then by taking the derivative of both sides of the rightmost uh, equation, we get that dx is equal to, well, the derivative of secant is uh, secant theta times tangent theta. That's all over two. And of course, d theta. So now looking at the expression, let's try to simplify this using our substitution. So we have, what do we have? We have four x squared minus one. And well, we know that x is secant theta over two. So let's, let's get that down. We have the square root of four times secant theta over two squared minus one. Well, this is equal to four times uh, secant uh, squared of theta over two squared, that's just four, and then minus one. We see that the fours cancel out, and that's just gonna leave us with the square root of secant squared theta, and then minus one. And this is a commonly known trigonometric identity. We're left with the square root of tangent squared theta and the square root of a square that just leaves us with the inside and that's tangent theta. So now we have this, we could go on and start solving this problem. So this integral, uh, first let's take the two out of the integral and bring it to the front. Uh, it's two times the integral of one over tangent theta. And dx, uh, that's equal to secant theta times tangent theta all over two, and then d theta. And watch this, we have the twos will cancel out, the tangents cancel out, leaving us only, uh, what are we left with? We're left with the integral of secant theta d theta. And this is another uh, commonly known integral. This integral is equal to ln the natural logarithm of secant theta plus tangent theta. Uh, close the absolute value, and of course, plus c, because this is an indefinite integral. So let's use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what uh, were uh, desired secant theta and tangent theta terms are in terms uh, of x. So we have our quick right angle triangle here, and we'll label this side to be equal to theta. And so secant theta is known to be one over cosine theta, the reciprocal of cosine. Uh, cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and that would mean that secant theta, the reciprocal, is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. And so we have secant theta is equal to 2x here. And that's the same as saying 2x over 1. So we could write in the hypotenuse 2x and for the adjacent term 1. Then by using Pythagorean theorem, we have that the opposite side will be equal to 4x squared minus 1. Okay, good. So now we could go on to find what secant theta and tangent theta are. Secant theta well, that's just given already in our substitution. We know that this is equal to 2x, so that's really easy. And then we go on to tangent theta. And tangent theta is known to be opposite over the adjacent. And that just equals out to the square root of 4x squared minus 1 over 1. So we could just leave that out. And now we could go on to write our final expression for this question 
we have that this is equal to ln of the absolute value of 2x then plus the square root of 4x squared minus 1 close absolute value plus c. So now we move on to our last problem. We're asked to find the integral of 3 over 9 plus x squared to the power of 3 over 2. Quickly, we see that there is no u substitution here or any simple identity. However, we can do a trigonometric substitution because we have here to the power of 3 over uh, 2. And anything to the power of 1 half is the same as taking the square root. So we can make the trigonometric substitution uh, for tan because we have uh, 9 plus x squared. And so to find our a and b values, well, a squared is equal to 9, so that must mean that a equals 3. And then we have b squared x squared is the same as x squared. x squared has uh, only a coefficient of 1, so that must mean that b equals 1. In this case, bx equals a tan theta becomes x equals uh, 3 tan theta. And so therefore, the derivative of x is equal to 3 secant squared, the derivative of tan d theta. Okay, very nice. So now let's simplify this expression. So we have 9 plus x squared to the power of 3 over 2. Now, making the substitution x equals 3 tan theta, we get 9 plus uh, 3 tan theta squared, and that's the power of 3 over 2. So this becomes, uh, by expanding, 9 plus 3 squared, that's 9, uh, tangent squared theta to the power of 3 over 2. And now we're going to factor out a term of 9. Uh, so we have 9 times 1 plus tangent squared theta uh, to the power of 3 over 2. And 1 plus tangent squared theta was well, the same as the last question. We know that this is equal to secant uh, squared. So we write 9 secant squared theta to the power of 3 over 2. So now let's get rid of this exponent. Uh, 9 to the power of 3 over 2. Well, 9 uh, to the power of 1 half is just 3. And then that to the power of 3 is 27. So we write 27. And we have secant squared. And then we have to the power of 3 over uh, 2. So the 2's will cancel out, leaving us only with secant cubed theta. Okay, perfect. So now we can move on to actually solve this integral. Uh, the final solution, well, not the final solution, but we write um, 3 over uh, 9 plus x squared to the power of 3 over 2. That will become, as displayed below, 27 times secant cubed theta. And dx uh, becomes 3 times secant squared theta d theta from the substitution. And so let's see what reduces here. The secant squared theta completely reduces, and we're left with secant theta in the denominator. Uh, we have 3 times 3, that's 9. Uh, 9 over 27. The 3s will cancel out, and we'll only have a 3 left in the denominator. So what we're left with now is the integral of 1 over 3 secant theta um, d theta. So now let's bring the 1 out of 3 term out of the integral, and we're left with the integral of 1 over secant theta, and 1 over secant theta, well, that's just cosine theta, and we have d theta, and the integral of cosine is, well, that's really easy to find. Uh, we have 1 third, and that integral is just sine theta, and of course, we have plus c for some constant c. So now let's bring out our trusty a right angle triangle and find out uh, what sine theta is in this case. And so we have, we'll say that the angle theta is right here. So we know that x over 3 is equal to tangent theta. And by Sokotoa, uh, tangent is known to be opposite over adjacent.
So we could write that the opposite is equal to x and the adjacent is equal to 3. Now using Pythagorean theorem, we get that the hypotenuse is x squared plus 9. And so it is quite easy to find uh, sine theta right now. Sine theta is just uh, opposite over adjacent. So we're going to get that it's equal to x over the square root of x squared plus 9. And so therefore, the final answer that we're looking for, we get x all over 3 times the square root of x squared plus 9 plus c for some constant c. And we just got that by moving the coefficient 1 third into this expression right here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you had any questions about the video or just other video suggestions, drop them down in the comments below. I do try to get to all of them. And if you made it this far, leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you loved it. That's all for me. Till next time.